Uh, Matt, it really seemed like in the second half the run was kind of stopped by Ethan Morgan coming in and having a good against Galloway. How did your defense respond to that second half after that game? Yeah, we were getting pretty good shots, um, and then they weren't going down to start the second half. Their shots were, so obviously they made a clear. They closed the gap that media timeout by around 10 points. And um, you know, when we subbed right there, I thought defensive, I thought Cam did some good things, and I thought Ethan did some good things, and they were able to push that lead back. And I think that's what, you know, what we talk about with those guys is like, you know, what's the score when you come in versus the score when you sub back out? And so, you know, it takes everybody. And uh, those guys have done a really good job defensively for us, Cam and Ethan. And, um, you know, we started Mason to start the second half just from an offensive spacing purpose. And he, had, he played really well in the first half. And then when Trey came in, it's funny how that works, right? You know, Trey played really well when he subbed back in for Mason, did a lot of really good things. So just proud of our guys, you know, total team effort. Matt, you know how these rivalry games can go. What does it say about your guys coming in here, hostile environment, and getting out of their way? Yeah, you know, we have we we a, a lot, lot of great wins, wins, but a lot of great neutral court wins. And yeah, that's really helped our resume. But we haven't, outside of winning at Maryland, we haven't really played that well on the road, true road games, this is just our fourth game. Um, so, you know, we needed a game like this. We needed to play better, we needed to shoot better. Um, but we also needed to give ourselves a chance and not turn the ball over. I thought, you, you know, if you look at the box score, we gave ourselves a chance. But when you get into these rivalry games, anything can go. So like when they, you know, quickly cut our lead by 10 points, and it's exactly what you're thinking, right? Um, you know, you guys have never stood up there and coached a game, but it's, uh, you know, you, you really think at that time, like, and it's at four possessions, five possessions, you know, it can happen, you, you know, you, but you, you got to keep your poise and keep your patience and uh, just keep doing what you know you did to get in that position. Not just the offensive plays you got from Fletcher, the slower stop their runs. Right. Just what did that kind of say about him in those moments? Yeah, you know, the three he made in the second half was big, you know, when they were making that run and he pushed it back to 14 and uh, it was at 11, but uh, they just had timely shots. It was very, very steady for us, um, you know, tonight going five or six. and. You know, four for four from three and get 19 points. But like, no, Fletch is, Fletch is a good player. He does a great job of playing off the break. He does a great job of playing off the side. Matt, at the very first media timeout of the game, you put Mason in right after that. He goes right at Mbako in the paint. Mbako picks up his second. Yep. Was that maybe the first step in putting you on the right path? Mbako yeah. started, started well. Yeah, he's a good player. He's talented. And, uh, you know, his ability to, to make shots and his ability to do things off the bounce a little bit. He, he, you know, he's really come. You know, he's one of those guys that's going to be really good next year. Um, and uh, he's had that learning curve. You're watching the first five or six games, and now you watch him now. He's like, a, he's a different player. You know, he's guarding, he's defending, he's doing what coach wants him to do. Um, but now it's a big play. When you, when you can come in there, you can bring guys like Mason Gillis off your bench, Caleb First off your bench, you know, Ethan. You know, Kane, Miles, all those guys, you know, it's it's a real spark because they're really not, you know, subs. You know, they're really starters that had come up. Matt, last year, Braden left here, and I think he, he was a little down with the way that ended. So not his shot's not going down, but he did a lot of other things to help you guys win the game. And I think that kind of shows the maturity of this yeah. kid, right? Yeah, Braden's a good player. He's competitive. He's got poise. Sees the floor. Um, you know, takes to coaching, understands, like, what they're trying to do, what they're trying to take away. Um, has a good feel for where Zach is and what Zach's trying to do. You got to give him time um, sometimes to get back in there, depending on how they're guarding him. You know, you know, outside of just his finishes, like you know, we just got to do a better job of working with him on some of his speed dribble finishes because he's good. He's good at that. And tonight it just didn't fall for him. But you know, he, you know, he was in control of the game. He had the ball in his hands more than anybody on that court, and uh, he was definitely in control. And I'm sure Zach probably took a different kind of person. What more can you say about him? What is almost certainly his last trip here? Uh, yeah. Play the way he did. Oh, he's a good player. So he didn't. He didn't shoot a great percentage. You know, it's um, it's a really good game for him. You know, we, we kept him in there a long time. He didn't get very many breaks. He played 36 minutes, and I thought when he got fatigued, he missed a couple. But I also thought he got fatigued, and you know, he made a couple. He kept going at where, kept you know holding him accountable. But you know, Zach's the best. You know, there's no way around it. You know, he can he rebounds the basketball. He causes a lot of attention. Uh, you see when he goes one on one, he's going to draw some fouls. You know, he's going to score the basketball. He accumulates a lot of rebounds. Uh, he, he's a real tough cover. Ware and Renew finished pretty far below their season scoring numbers. Just what did it take defensively to kind of limit those guys? Yeah, Renew was the guy for us. You know, we, we, we thought that, you know, he was the one. You know, we gave him a lot of attention. 
So when he dribbled and when he was extended, you know, we put another guy there. We went at him, um, tried to double him. We got a couple of rotations and got burned that way. But he's so good when he gets to his right shoulder and gets to the middle, whether he's driving it or he's posting. So you got to, you know, you got to keep him off the glass. He had two offensive rebounds. Um, but, you know, he, he's a good player. That combination, you know, is, you know, where's the ability to stretch the defense? You know, for us, that puts us in a bind a little bit. You know, anytime that people can stretch us out. But Zach's gotten so much better in ball screen defense and switching and guarding people and, and doing different things. But we had him in, we had wearing USA basketball. You know, he's, he's a talent. But I, I, you know, obviously, I always say the adjustment to, to go against Zach, it takes a game. You know, it, it takes a game just to kind of feel your way through it. It's like playing a good pressing team and you like you press in practice and you're not a pressing team. Then like, okay, we're ready for this team. And then you get to the game and it's like, oh shit, you know, we didn't see this in practice. Like he ain't seeing that in practice. You know, so that's difficult to see someone that can move that seven four, three hundred, size twenties, that plays hard every single play. You know, you just you know, who the hell's diving up eighteen at seven four, three hundred? Like it just kinda of shows you who he is. You, 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 mentioned, you mentioned earlier the importance of, of doing well on a road game, coming into the road game. What do you find out about a team when they do that? What do you find out? You know, just the resolve. Like, that isn't easy. Like, that's an unbelievable environment. Like, the fans here are amazing. I mean, they, they come out, they support their team. Um, you know, they've been spoiled through the years. And I mean, they've had some great, great teams here. Um, a lot of tradition here. But like to be able to come in here to be up 22 at half is a huge statement for our team. Like just the confidence, and because we've come back to back years, and you know the first half been terrible, but I think a lot of that has to do with the fans and the players from Indiana. They made us play that way, and tonight, you know, we, we did it, and like, but we did it in this Hornets nest, which is a big compliment to our team. You mentioned Mason. How pleased were you with the minutes you got from Keelan and uh, Ethan as well? Yeah, you know, Ethan played well. Ethan came in and defended. Did some really good things. Made good decisions. Um, you know, Caleb had some really good minutes in the first half. We stayed with Zach a little bit more in the second half, so that shortened it um, for him. I thought Mason had a really good first half. You know, he, he really helped us in that first half. You look at his plus minus. Then at the start of the second half, we just felt like we had to get somebody more physical and renew after we had that struggle the first five, six minutes. And I thought Trey Kaufman did a really good job. Matt, people are talking about Zach now as a lottery player. Mm -hmm. What improvements have you seen? that make him a lottery Yeah, candidate. well, when we veered more in ball screens. We've switched more uh, when the ball's gotten deep. And, and so, like, his ability to guard the basketball, you know, his ability to get out on the perimeter, you know, when you compare it to somebody 6'8", 210, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot different, right? But when you compare it to people his size, he's, he's really moving. Like, he's really doing a good job. Um, you know, he makes his free throws. He can shoot on the perimeter. I just don't love him. You know, people get upset about it, but you know who would really like if he shot on the perimeter? Those guys guard me. They really like that. I, I love just you know keep going at it like a football mentality. Just keep making them pay. Just keep posting. You're not going to keep the guy, right? He's not going to be a 15-year vet at Purdue, right? You're not, you don't keep him. Like you, you got you got to you got to let them play to their strengths right there. But now he's he protects the rim better. When he gets a foul, like we we get him to stay on his feet. So when you saw Sparks make that one and do whatever, our whole bench is just yelling at him to stay down, just stay down, because we don't need him to get two. You know, we don't. And, and so a little bit of that. But like, he's improved defensively. He's a willing passer. He doesn't have the bullshit because he didn't get recruited. That's the best way I can say it. These guys get recruited and they come here and then they got to field a team. And now you've got to come in and play a role. It's like the great college players. If you can't rebound and you can't defend and you can't play a role in the NBA, you can't play in the NBA outside of like three or four guys in a draft, right? You've got to be able to do those things. He does a lot of little things that help the team win. And so I, that's why I think they got a place there for him, because those things have improved. But he can rebound, he can pass, he can score this back to the basket. You know, I think he's got a spot. Right. Matt, just um, Lance made a bunch of plays for you, and I included a big one right for the half. Yeah. Where do you kind of view his three-point shooting at this point in terms of your overall offensive picture, his volume? Yeah, you know, just playing off of other people. Like just like when you when you get into the situation and you have a great point guard and you have a great big guy that garner a lot of attention, just take what comes your way. And you know, obviously he made the one that they called the illegal screen on, so he was three for seven, but he would have been four for eight. Um, you know, I liked at the end of the game just how, how hard he ran on the break and went and got us a couple layups. You know, we've had teams where we didn't have that, right? 
And so when we had Carson or we had J.I., those guys could get us those type of buckets. But when we haven't had those type of guys, he's not at their level. But that's what we need. You know, we need him to be able to steal some baskets in transition and then just take his threes to come his way. You talked about Mbako and Ware and the impact that they had. I think it was 12-9 when both those guys came out in the first half. And yeah. then by the time they came back, you guys are really pulled away. What do you feel like changed for Indiana with those guys off the floor? And what were you able to take advantage of? Yeah, well, you know, you have a little bit of a drop off. Um, when you like, you know, Khalil Ware and Mbako are probably going to be in the NBA, right? And you have a little bit of a drop off. You know, Zach Eady gets in foul trouble, he goes out. You know, even though we have good players, you have a little bit of a, you have a drop off, right? And, and, and so, you know, that's what you want to be able to do, and that's what I constantly try to do through the development of our program and have guys, is make sure you have enough guys when foul trouble hits or injuries hit, you have guys that are ready to roll and ready to play. And that's really hard because everybody wants to, you know, everybody wants to start, everybody wants to play 30 minutes, it doesn't work that way. So it's hard to field a team these days in, in this landscape, but um, we definitely took advantage of it. You know, no different than Nebraska took advantage of us when Zach went out at the end of the first half in our game with them. That's what I like. You mentioned this play earlier, but was your favorite play with Zach tonight to see him go to the floor after loose ball? Yeah, no question. Situation? You know, instinctually do it. You know, not, not you know, we had to, like, oh, I guess I got to do this. Like, <laughs> no, he instinctually dove and got us a, you know, got us a loose ball and got the possession back. No question about it. So, he's fun to coach. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Thanks.